So in this lesson, we're going to outline the layout of the K-Suite software. So K-Suite can be used for KES and KTAG. And what we're going to be covering in this lesson is how to find out whether a vehicle is covered on KES and KTAG um, and a few of the other options that you've got on this main screen here. So when you load up the tool, uh, the K-Suite software, whether you're using KES or KTAG, it loads up into the same software. If you've got a KES connected and everything's plugged in as it should be, you'll get a red line around this KES icon. If you're working with KTAG, you'll have a blue line around the KTAG icon. To work on vehicles, you want to be clicking on this section here that says KES V2. Um, you don't want to be clicking on what says vehicle list, which is just here. Your vehicle list is to show you vehicles that you could potentially do, but if you're actually on a job and want to work with a tool and actually read an ECU, then you need to be clicking on this KES icon at the top left. So, if you're working on vehicles, you can click on the KES, uh, this one here, the KES V2 icon. And what that'll do is go through to a screen and show you all the vehicles that you can work on right now with the tool that you've got connected. So, you can then work with uh, the bikes or trucks or tractors or boats. It depends what activations you've got activated on the tool. But for this example, we're going to go with cars. And on the cars is also vans. So if you're looking for a van, it'll be covered under the car icon. Once you click on car, it'll look up the, uh, load up the vehicle list for cars and light commercial vehicles. So that's uh, vans as well. It does take a bit of time to load up, depending on how slow your or fast your laptop is. will depend on how fast this load, uh, will load up. But we recommend only clicking it once. If you're clicking things twice, that can sometimes uh, make it take longer. So you can see I've clicked on that and we're back at this screen. And the reason for that is the, the icon that we've clicked here, that screen is in the taskbar. So I um, don't know why it does it, but it's there. Um, there's the screen that we're, we're looking for. So um, here we are on this screen. Um, it, it opens up on the last vehicle you used it on, which was this Saab. And you can select through just the normal way you would select through, starting with the make, uh, then moving on to whatever the model is. And as you click one thing, just let it have a bit of time to load through uh, to the next vehicle, uh, the, the coverage list to load up. Um, and you select whatever vehicle it is, whatever engine it is, and so on. Uh, and then once you've selected the right one, you can look at the book, the instructions. Um, so this is really important that you read the instructions for this protocol to make sure there's nothing special in there. If he isn't, you can press a green tick at the bottom right hand corner and that will take you through to the ID reading, writing, uh, recovery screen. Um, and at that point, you would just go forward and remap the vehicle, ID the ECU. If it's a VR, it will give you the virtual read file automatically onto your laptop and then go through to sending the file off to your tuner, getting the file back and then going through to the writing screen, which is this one. If you get any issues, you can use the recovery. So you start at the top with ID, and this is a VR ECU, as we covered about VRs already um, in the course, virtual read, meaning UID the ECU is going to give you the virtual read file. The writing is for you to write the tuned file in, and the recovery is if anything went wrong, you could use a recovery function. And again, it gives you the book here in the corner, so you can see what other options you've got, uh, if there's any special instructions or anything like that. So going forward, um, you've got uh, your, that's how you obviously got everything you need in this screen to work with the vehicle. So we'll go back to the other screen. And like I said, it does take a long time. It doesn't matter how fast your laptop is, it is just slow. Uh, the laptop we're working with here, 16 gig of RAM, uh, Windows 10, and plenty of hard drive space. It's just not a fast software. Right, so we'll look on at um, another vehicle. And again, it works the same. You select the make, select the model, and you just go forward from there. Once you're happy, you go down to the green tick and proceed on to read him. So that's how you use the software to read. If you're working with a different uh, vehicle, you'd select 
a boat if you're working with a boat but you would need the activations for the tool the tool comes out of the box with cars and vans and bikes these trucks tractors and um, boats are an add-on so in most cases what we recommend is um, it, just getting the cares with these normal activations if you start getting involved in trucks and tractors and boats it's usually easier and cheaper to buy a, a K tag than it is to activate the modules but you can give us a call and ask us about that um, so that's how you select the right vehicle um, and we'll just work from this way backwards if you need support from Alien Tech you can click on that you can get the logs uh, support area um, which we've covered in another uh, video, another lesson on how to get the logs uh, and the support area. You can go back home. You got your settings for the tool. So that just gives you all the different settings options, language options. If there's any updates, you can search for updates here. Um, units of measurement and all that. I recommend keeping the screen resolution in small uh, when you install the software. Protocol list you won't ever need really, and then last one is vehicle list. So what you use this for is to see all the vehicles covered by both Kez and KTAG in one place. So you can click on this, and this isn't to work with the vehicle; it's to check. So say for instance you had a contract for a fleet of uh, tractors or something like that, um, and you wanted to see whether it was possible to do. Um, you could go through even though you don't own the protocols yet for tractors click on um, truck or tractor or whatever you're working on um, and then select the model after that and then go through um, and it just shows you what vehicles you can work with on CAS all the different vehicles and the different protocols and you can even switch over to KTAG from here you can switch on to KTAG on the top bar there you can see K-Suite which it shows you all of CAS and KTAG Kez where it only shows you Kez vehicles, which is this one. And lastly, K tag, where it will show you only K tag vehicles. So if it's not covered on Kez, you can go to say you're doing um, we've got a job example that one of our dealers asked us to check uh whether it could be covered. It was a tractor Ferguson. That's the Ferguson and the model was a Five MF five four six five, so MF five four six five, and um, yeah, it was this one. So one of our dealers asked us to check coverage uh, to see what tool covers this actual vehicle, um, and we've gone through using the vehicle coverage uh, vehicle list, check in on K tag, and we can see it's not this vehicle is not covered on Kaz uh, with the uh, protocol activated. It's not covered on CAS, uh, but it is covered on KTAG. So because it's a fleet of vehicles that you might be able to get the contract for, um, it would be worth buying the KTAG because it's going to work with this um, range of tractors. So um, it's a good way in checking what vehicles you could do if you owned a KTAG. Uh, the other one we had the other day was a dealer that works with pickups, uh, pickup trucks. Um, and he was he works with just pickup trucks and I think it was a Toyota um, Hilux or something like that uh, so we'll go through here and this vehicle wasn't covered on Kez um, it, it, the, it was an ID only ECU and there was no ID available um, but it was, it was one of these vehicles and um, you can go through even if you don't own the KTAG yet and you've just got the CAS, and you can go through and look at what's um, what's involved, what vehicle, um, what vehicles it covers, and all that. So it's a really useful way in just checking the coverage list um, and seeing if you get a contract through or a customer ask about a vehicle. Even if you don't have KTAG, you can check what coverage you can do on the tool before you actually end up buying the tool. If you're looking at Auto Tuner as a secondary tool, uh, you can actually look at Auto Tuner's coverage list simply by going on uh, AutoTuner website, the main website for AutoTuner, go on compatibility and it will show you easily, yeah, nice and easily, without you even owning at all what its coverage list is. For most other tools, if you go to the maker of the tool, you'll find a downloadable coverage list. Uh, AutoTuner is, is very useful because you haven't got to download anything. It self-updates the page with the new vehicles added on there, so you can just manually check 
without even um, even if you own it or you ain't got to plug it in and load it up um you can on your phone you can go onto the auto tuner website and check the coverage list there um with k suite it's always best to check on the tool everything online is more out of date than the tool obviously you always want to go on settings and make sure your tool is fully up to date there's an update due for this one uh, so there's no point in checking your coverage list if you haven't done the update because it might say it's not covered then you do the update and then it is covered so you'd always want to check your coverage list uh, it make sure it's updated first but you always want to check on the actual tool because that'll be the most up-to-date thing uh, anything you see online for Kez or KTAG um, is obviously out of date already um, because it's already been posted up so yeah that's how you use the main screens and navigate through the menus in uh, the K-Suite software for Kez and on KTAG also